Hello everyone. So this video is about hemocytometer. Within hemocytometer, we'll be talking about what questions you can get in sporting and viva questions and how the calculation is being done. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe it. Let's get started. Okay, so this box is hemocytometer. Okay, this box is having two pipet and one new bar chamber and a cover slip, which is not shown here. Now, within sporting exams, the most frequently you get a different okay? so pipet. Okay, so you should know how to identify them. These are very easy if you just concentrate once. So, on the other hand, you get some rubber tubing which can have different colors. So, don't uh, be confused about these colors. Now, what how you can identify? First of all, hemoglobinometer pipette. Hemoglobinometer pipette don't have bulb, first of all, okay? It have only single marking that is 20 microliter, okay? On the other hand, we have WBC and RBC pipette which have bulb, fine? So, how you can identify these two pipette? So, for WBC pipette, the bead is of small size and white color, first thing. Second thing is the marking difference. The marking on WBC pipette is still 11. So 0.5 and 1 is same for both and 11 marking in WBC. That's how we 20 times dilute the blood here because WBC count is not as large as RBC. On the other hand, RBC have red bead in the bulb which is larger. So bulb is larger and bead size. So okay. So if you talk about marking, then the marking are in RBC pipette, the marking are 101. So it's 200 time dilution. As we know, RBC uh, concentration in our blood is much higher in millions. On the other hand, WBC is in thousands. So more dilution is required in RBC. So we have more marking 101. So 200 time dilution. So this way we can easily find out which pipette is placed in sporting. Then the same. So don't uh, be confused about the color of this rubber tubing, okay? So it's not necessary that it will be red always for RBC because these can be interchanged easily, okay? But how you can identify are the identifying feature which we just discussed. So red bead with 101 marking here, white bead with one marking, seven marking, okay? So you may get some uh, slide like structure which is new bar chamber, okay? So this is new bar chamber on which this area, this polished area is basically having a grid to calculate that. If we, so we have to basically, if we zoom this area, we can see a grid like structure this, where we have different chambers for different cell counting. Okay, so this is a cover slip. So I'll be covering it here. Fine, we can charge it on other side like this. Okay. So, if we zoom this area, this look like this one, different areas are there for different cell calculation. We will be discussing one by one. So, this is called counting grid. Okay, now let's just brief the procedure. So, ensure cleanliness of all the instruments, fine. So, all the instruments should be ready in hand and clean. Second thing is take diluting fluid in watch glass in which for WBC we have to take Tux fluid and for Hames fluid for RBC calculation. Then we have to using our aseptic techniques, we have to prick the finger. Then fill the pipette till 0 0.5 mark with second drop of blood. So first wipe first drop of blood and then with second drop of blood, fill the pipette till 0.5 mark, the first mark. Okay, then wipe the tip so that the extra blood wipe away and then fill the diluting fluid till marking. So for RBC, we have to fill till 101 and for WBC till 1111. Holding the pipette horizontally. Then roll the pipette horizontally between palm of both the hands to ensure mixing of blood. Okay, then place the cover slip and charge the new bar chamber after discarding first few drops from pipette by touching the edge of cover slip. So first we discard few drops, then we touch the edge of cover slip and charge the chamber like this fine then after one minute as it dry focus under low bar and then shift to high bar and count the cells for counting of cells there are some rules so there are some 
fixed area for counting. So if you can see here the whole structure having nine divisions. So all corners are for WBC counting and the central square is for RBC counting. Fine. But for counting even there is a rule that we have to leave two sides every time when we count different cells. So count upper and left border. So upper and left border. The cells on upper border and left border we have to count and rest two border we have to leave. As you can see the tick green color showing these border we have to count. So that we can't count the cells again in next box. That's why we are just leaving two sides. So omit right and lower border. Then let's see how basically calculation part is done. So first let's see RBC calculation. So within this as I said the, the middle one the middle square is used for RBC calculation. So this uh, is basically how you how you can recognize this area is RBC chamber is having three lines first of all. Second thing is now this have further five division on one side. So total 25 small squares are present fine. Within one small square there are further 16 smallest squares are present or either way we can take them as uh, medium size square and small square okay so within this chamber within all 25 squares we have to basically count rbc in these five which are filled with red color only these five boxes we have to calculate right so this hole is large and this is medium so we have to Calculate in five medium size squares. Now, how we can calculate? How we can calculate RBCs? What is calculation part? So we know that this one, this one box is basically one mm. Fine. This hole is three mm. So one is one is width and breadth both. This is one mm. Okay. So one square, if we say this is one by five mm. Fine. Now we know that RBC calculation or WBC calculation the number is per cubic mm okay which is basically showing the volume. So nothing we have to just calculate the number of cells and we have to calculate the volume of cells. So how we can calculate the volume of these five medium size squares how so this hole is 1 mm so fifth division will be 1 by 5 mm okay now area is 1 by 5 into 1 by 5. In 1 by 5 into 1 by 5 okay okay and we are calculating only 5 so we'll be multiplying it with 5 so 1 by 5 into 1 by 5 into 5 because we are calculating 5 squares and the depth which will give us the volume so this is 1 by 50 n is number of cells we'll be counting okay then depth is 1 by 10 and dilution factor is 200 so total rbc count is n into dilution factor divided by volume okay so dilution factor here is 200 time in rbc so the value come is n which is the number of cell into multiplied by 10000 per cubic mm gives you the total rbc count coming to wbc calculation again so these the corner squares are wbc's fine now we know that this one square the length and breadth both are 1 mm fine so the volume will be 1 into 1 okay so 1 into 1 we know depth is 1 by 10 that is 0.1 so the volume of one square one big square is 0 0.1 and we know we have to calculate in four big square so 0.1 into 4 so volume is 0 0.4 okay n is number of cell and depth we know and dilution factor here is 20 okay so total wbc's are n into dilution factor divided by volume so n into 20 divided by 0 0.4 which is the volume so the result is n into 50 so the wbc came out to be whatever n value we count we have to just multiply it with 50 which gives us the WBC count. So this way we can calculate RBC and WBC and we can recognize all the apparatus part.
so that's all about hemocytometer thanks for watching